kind of projects does your production company specialize in? My production company has done a lot of sports documentaries, but we've done all kinds of documentaries, uh, series, unscripted, reality, corporate videos. Sometimes you do uh, one for the meal, one for the real. Um, so, and, and, and more recently, our first scripted. So pretty much everything under the storytelling gamut we've done. And so when you were still uh, employed, mm -hmm. uh, as an employee, you were setting up like an LLC and getting yeah. all the paperwork ready? And, mm -hmm. and Yeah, it's pretty easy actually. I mean, you just go to the Secretary of State, you get incorporated, and I did that. Uh, I had had some experience trying to do little side hustles when I had a job anyway. Like I had a personal training business or I had a fitness radio show and different things like that. So I knew to get incorporated and I had like, I just said, if I can just match what I made at my job, I'll be fine. If I could just match like that salary. So I had two projects set up and again, it's relationships that do people like working with you? Are you easy to deal with? Are you cooperative? It's just striking that balance because I've met filmmakers who are very talented, but they don't do well in that client relationship. They don't do well with notes. They don't do well. And it's just being able to strike that balance. Um, so the first year I had my production company, I doubled what I made at, at NASCAR, which I was happy with. Then like the following year after that, I doubled that. So every year I was doubling what I was making from the previous year. So. It started, it was going really well. Um, and so I would say if you're gonna start your own production company, it's easier now than ever, but you have to have some, you do have to have some infrastructure in place. Like I had a cinematographer that I knew, uh, and also too at the time, I, edit, I did it a lot myself. I edited my own work, I directed it, I produced it, I wrote it. In fact, uh, I don't know if I'm going too off tangent, but, uh, this one guy uh, who had a company, like a full production company with like a staff of like 40 people, he was asking me on the book of Manning, he's like, well, who did this? And I'm like, that was me. And he's like, well, who did this? I'm like, that was me. He's like, who's your production coordinator? I'm like, me. So, um, and he was asking like, where did you do your editing at? And I just remember talking to him on the phone, I just looked over it and it was like a fold out card table that I had in my gym at home. Like that's where I did all the editing. Like I didn't, so I, I actually had bought a book, this might be helpful to viewers. I bought a book called Rework, which is about why companies fail a lot in their first five years. And a lot of it is just wasted money, wasted resources, like doing things more for vanity. Like they think they have to go to an office or they have to have an assistant. And you know, one of the biggest lessons was just spend money on what you have to have. And that's what I did. So I worked out of my home, uh, kept crews really minimal, treated people really well, tried to do that. So um, that was helpful, that book. What do you think some of the things that are spent um, on vanity aside from, I mean, assistant, you could say some of that's a necessity so you don't burn out because mm -hmm. it is, so, so easy to burn out yeah. being on your own. Um, but, but what do you think a lot of people spend on vanity um, that, that could be cut away? Well, you see a lot, of, you saw it during COVID offices. I mean, think about how many people started working from home during COVID and realized that they don't necessarily have to go to an office. I saw it after I got divorced, I have 50% uh, custody of my kids. So when I would get hired, like a lot of times they would want me to come to LA and sit in the edit suite if I was working on a project. And I would say, no, like I'm not, I'm not able to do that. Or I could do it every other week, but this was uh, non-negotiable for me. And you can do a lot remotely. Like you can do, I think people are catching on now, but for a long period of time, it's like things were still being done from like 20 years ago, like how, uh, a producer has to sit in the room with the editor. You have to be on location. You have to, you know, especially in post, um, just things like that. And, and also too, I've seen treating all productions the same. So a documentary shoot is being treated the same as a commercial shoot. A commercial shoot is like huge. I've done commercials and there's people there who are just like, 
in charge of walkie talkies. I mean, there's like every little job is like one person. And on a documentary, you want to have a more intimate uh, crew. And especially if you're doing something really like personal and emotional, sometimes you only want like three people with, with the subject, if that. So they're different. But I would see some people applying that same commercial mentality to a documentary. So uh, those are some of the things I've seen money being wasted on. How did you assemble your team and what are some of the qualities you look for in your collaborators? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I assemble my team by people I've worked with previously at the NFL and NASCAR, uh, cinematographers, audio editors. So I would say it's twofold. Um, talent is important, obviously, but to me, not as important as uh, being low maintenance. <laughs> like I can't, I can't stress how important that is. Um, you want people that are going to go with the flow. You know, like I'm looking for Bruce Lee to be on my crew, be like water. You conform to the container because production is constantly changing. It's not like accounting or doing, you know, life insurance. You go out there, especially in documentaries, but in scripted too, what you think's gonna happen that day and what happens are usually, they don't line up all the time. So you wanna be with people that can be flexible and that you want to spend time with, like in a van, like driving down the highway. So I, not everybody may agree with this, but I would rather have somebody, let's say, that is a A minus cinematographer, but I really like and puts me in a good mood to be around than someone who's an A plus and a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> like that's me, because to me, life is short. And I have to spend time with these people and I want, to get al I want to get along with who I work with. I don't look at it like work and personal. To me, my work is personal because I'm spending my time, you know, and it's, uh, it's time I could be doing anything else. So I would say the people I work with are my friends, uh, genuinely. And um, when it comes to documentaries, some people have, I, I, and I've heard this been said, and to me, by the way, uh, don't be friends with your subjects. Don't be friends. You gotta keep that distance. And I see the argument in that, but also I think when you're friends with someone, you develop trust. And when someone trusts you, they're more willing to be open. Um, and I look at being friends as sometimes you have to tell someone hard truths. So it doesn't mean you're gonna sugarcoat things and you know, and I think you just can get a better working relationship when you are friends or at least friendly with the subject. And I just did my first scripted feature and uh, we had our premiere at the Santa Barbara Film Festival and my parents, my parents came and my, the one thing that, that uh, touched me a lot was that my dad said, boy, everybody that you work with really uh, likes you and, and they really seem like they're your friends. And I was like, great, like that's awesome because I want to be that way, you know, um, with the actors, the crew and all that. So I try to hire people that I get along with.